Hey, you guys, how y'all doing? We're ready. I am going live on Insta now so that we can make sure everyone is included. And I'm waiting for my button. Where's my button? Why don't we do this? There you go. That would be easier. All right, here we go. We are on day 12 of 100 Days to Brave. All right, so today is all about that mean girl on the inside of us, about those things that we tell ourselves when we put the jeans on and they don't quit quite, they don't fit quite how we want them to. And that dialogue that immediately kind of starts off in our head when we eat too much and when we make a mistake and we mess up and we fall on our face in front of somebody else, especially when we have to put our foot in our mouths and, you know, when we just, you know, have a good excuse, we think, to give ourselves a hard time. But what what is it that is actually happening when we go there? When we let that that mean girl, that inside mean girl uh, take over and allow her to have a place or uh, to to, or, or, you know, permission to speak to us in a way that isn't life giving is, isn't creating anything good, but really only creating everything negative. Remember, we already talked about the power of the mind. We talked about the heart. We talked about the feet, but we talked about the power of the mind and how we get to choose what's, what our life is going to be made up of and the quality of our everyday based on what it is that we put in this right here, right? And so today we're going to go uh, and talk now about this guy right here, this girl, yeah, 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 the tongue, all right, the tongue. And remember, we talked about how all issues of life, they flow from the heart. So we're kind of, this is kind of connecting everything here because the way I the way I see it, we're kind of connecting everything here. It's not what Annie says in her devotional. But um, when you're when when you're thinking about the fact that we already talked about whatever message we or whatever lie, uh, whatever truth we have, a, we're believing in our hearts and it's feeding our minds and out of you know, whatever it is that we're allowing to get in our ears and our eyes to feed our thoughts that go down into our heart. That's what we're going to act out. That's what we're going to speak to ourselves. That's what we're going to speak to others. That's how we're going to treat ourselves. That's how we're going to treat others. That's the how that's going to determine what kind of mom, what kind of wife, what kind of daughter, what kind of friend, what kind of coworker, you know, what kind of self care I give myself. It, it, all of these things, Handy, the money I make, the job that I believe I can do, you know, the good that I believe that I am to another person or the opposite, the bad. So whatever it is that I believe about myself is going to determine what comes out of this mouth right here. So let's talk about this mouth, okay, and how much trouble we can get into when we allow that mean girl inside, that voice um, uh, that, that, that shoots us down, that criticizes us, that lets us know, Ooh, that was a big old mistake, right? Uh, you look at you, you're so weak. You're so dumb. You're so, uh, less than you don't compare to her. You'll never reach that goal of yours. Look, you messed up again. Why do you keep trying to do this? Uh, you know, why even start over because you never win anyway. And so here's the deal. The death and life is in the power of this person, this member right here. Okay. No matter what's going on here and no matter what's going on here, we can still choose the words we're going to speak over ourselves internally and externally, right? We can still have the power to choose what kind of words we're going to speak over and to other people that influence how they think and feel about themselves and the, and, and, you know, what is, is created in our life, right? Because we already established the fact that everything in our life is from what's in here first, right? So you look at Proverbs 18:21 and NIV, it says the tongue has the power of life and death and those who love it will eat its fruit. When you go to Proverbs in, in the Amplified Bible, just to give us a little bit more 
depth. It says death and life are in the power of the tongue and they who indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it for either death or life. And there's a cross reference of Matthew 12, 37. You will look at it, but listen, this is what this means. It whatever dominates you most will make your decisions. See the more, and I want to make a side note real quick because the more, the, the more comfortable you get with your, uh, your uh, fitness routine, with your nutrition, the more comfortable you get in practicing those principles that, that, uh, influence and improve your health and fitness over time, the more extreme it looks to some people because they aren't where you are. They're still stuck in old mindsets, old feelings, old thinking patterns, and they haven't progressed to where you are now. But you have, because you know death and life are in the power of the tongue, and that whatever dominates you most will make your decisions, you are progressively getting more and more confident, more and more uh, uh, comfortable, more and more determined, more and more uh, engaged in, you know, purposefully putting your attention into what you are capable of, both for physical fitness, mental, emotional, financial, whatever, you know, so you are progressing is what I'm saying. You are progressing. You are giving life to that area of your being that previously you didn't give any energy to, and they're still stuck there, but you have progressed. All right. So we can either choose to continue to speak life or we can choose to speak death, destruction, criticism, negativity, right? So Annie says, uh, shares with us in her devotional that she says, this morning when I did not look like, okay, this morning when I did not like the look of the jeans that I put on, I told myself so. How many of you have been there? Be honest, be honest, okay? We all have Tops that are more fitted than others. We have jeans that are more fitted than others. Um, we all have days where it's the day after having, you know, ice cream and pizza or whatever, and we're more bloated and we put those clothes on and we go, I don't like the way this fits. And we tell ourselves so like, Ugh. and that inner mean girl, we give her permission to talk to us. And what we're going to do today is we're going to stop that girl in her tracks. We're going to learn how to recognize and what to do about her when she starts speaking to us because she no longer has permission to rule and reign and uh, what life or, you know, to, I'm sorry, to rule and reign death over our thoughts because that's what the mean girl is doing. The, the mean girl is is doing nothing but dumping death, death, death with every negative thought. We want to create and produce life in our thoughts. So old Annie, she says, would have continued a barrage of ugly remarks about my looks. But instead, she says, she looked in the mirror and said, hey, put on a different pair. No biggie. And shook it off and changed. OK, so see how Proverbs 1821 says everything you say is either producing life or death. It's just as true when you talk to yourself as when when you talk to yourself as when you are speaking to others. Just like with my jeans this morning, she says, I have to choose words of life over words of death. That's the kind of conversations I, I want to have with myself. The ones that are truthful and kind and full of life. Wouldn't you love, this is me telling you, wouldn't you love to have nothing but positive conversations with yourself? I need to be honest with you right now. Disclaimer, me personally, Angel, this is uncomfortable for me. It's it, it's against the grain and the norm of what, of what the majority of my life up until this point had been, okay? I went all through my... Uh, 
my teens and my or my 20s okay into all, pretty much right up until uh, up into my 30s with this negative uh, record player okay and so for me to look at myself in the mirror in fact I remember a time a friend of mine was leading a ministry group for teens and as part one of the exercises she had, them do and she had some of us adults like in the room and um we were participating was to look in the mirror and say positive things say positive things actually it was look in the mirror and um and 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 share what you thought about yourself what did you see and i was so still like oh torn up inside i was in ministry but i was torn up and messed up inside about my inner dialogue to myself my mean girl was very much alive um, and taking over the, the space between my ears and wreaking havoc in my heart that I um, could not even speak the words. I just cried and could not participate. Like I just cried because I didn't like what had come up and I knew it was something that I needed to start dealing with. Um, I needed to correct that. Right. So wouldn't you love it? it to be able, and it was very uncomfortable. Still now, y'all, it is very uncomfortable for me to look at myself in the mirror and be like, you are beautiful. You are valuable. You are an asset to everyone around you. You are God's favored. You are God's daughter. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are smart. You are funny. You know, like positive things, right? So friends, stop being mean to yourself. It might be uncomfortable, it might be weird, but seriously, if you are going to be the person who does the brave things God is calling you to, then speaking life and developing beautiful things in others with your words begins with doing it for yourself. Okay, so self-talk is a big part of everyone's everyone's life. Okay, this is not just for the emotionally broken or the mentally broken. OK, don't sit there and say, oh, this is that self-help kind of crap. And, you know, like this is just for people who are weak. No, this is this is everybody. Well, how how do you think that the uh, financially fit, the mentally fit, the success, most successful people in life? How do you think that they got to that point? They had to address this right here. They did something different here. Than the rest of us leaving, living a mediocre or less than life. You see what I'm saying? They have tapped into a higher level. All right. So if we want to be able to bring our life up a level, our fitness, our health, our relationships, our finances, we have to bring the thinking up so that we can bring our and, and we have to bring our speaking up. OK. And even if it's not here yet, it needs to be here. So you need to listen. We constantly and subconsciously have thoughts running through our minds that direct our days. They direct our days. The thoughts in our minds direct our days. You need to listen to those. But the negative ones, the ones that cut you down and make you feel unloved and, un and afraid, it's time to chuck them. It's time to get rid of the mean girl, y'all. It's time to get put her in her place, right? So stop yourself. Identify the lie and say the truth in its place. This is something that I had to do even with my like my my emotional eating. I had to when I would catch myself wanting like uncontrollably wanting like Reese's peanut butter cups or whatever and hey, I see you Dave. I see you. Um is is like I had to stop myself. So just how I had to create that to, uh, that that discipline to stop myself before reaching for you know food that wasn't good for me. I had to learn how to stop myself in reaching for thoughts that weren't good for me either. Right? I had to when I realized when I was started to intentionally pay attention to the dialogue that was going off and firing off in, in my brain and my thoughts every day. I had to stop and recognize them and be like, hold up, I don't like that thought. That thought makes me feel crappy. It makes me feel, you know, gross. Um, and so I'm going to stop right now. I'm going to stare that mean girl down and I'm going to squash her. I'm going to silence that lie. I'm going to identify the lie. I'm going to understand where it comes from. And I'm going to get to the root of that thing and I'm going to replace it with truth. OK, and I'm going to speak the truth to myself in its place. 
And so speaking kindly to yourself, Annie tells us, will make you brave. If you're having trouble finding reasons to speak kindly to yourself, remember, it's not that you have earned the love of God or that you deserve love. God loves us even though we don't deserve it. First John 4, 19, if you need to look that up, there's a good truth for you. You haven't earned this love. This love is a gift. So we don't attempt to beat the lies. We don't attempt to beat the lies and believe the truth and love ourselves because we are perfect. We do it because in our imperfections, God loves us deeply and has made us just the way he wanted. So Andy says, you can speak kindly to yourself because not because you've done everything perfect, not because you are perfect, but because God loves you deeply because you are his, right? So speak kindly to yourself as Jesus speaks kindly to you. Can you imagine Jesus saying anything negative to you? I mean, really, like, can you imagine him like beating you up, like verbally abusing you? <coughs> I mean, really? <coughs> no, those words have power. So don't speak, the, don't allow the mean girl to speak to you in a, such a way that Jesus wouldn't be speaking to you. The, vo the voice inside of us needs to be a mirror reflection of the voice of God towards us. So I like this exercise. It's, um, it's, it's like, okay, if you're having a hard time imagining, like, what would God say to you? Because maybe you're like me and you grew up and you kind of have this complex that, like, God was always a disapproving God. God was only the wrath of fire God. And you don't know this grace-filled God um, that loves us unconditionally. I had a real complex with trying to understand, you know, this heavenly father that was the perfect dad from heaven and um, loved me no matter what. Right. Um, and was always there to help me no matter how messed up I was or what mistake or what sin I had just participated in like moments before. You know what I'm saying? It took me a little bit. And so but me myself, I know the thoughts that I have toward my children. OK. And so instead of trying to first just believe that God believed that I was awesome and what would God have to I couldn't, you know, my my my, my thinking in that regard was off. So instead, in, in order to help me correct those thoughts, I first would center myself in thinking, what thoughts do I have about my children? OK. And I promise you, all of them were positive. All of them are positive. All of them are filled with unconditional love. All of them are grace filled, right? I can be totally upset and angry with my kids for doing something, but still I fully and unconditionally love them, right? I mean, isn't that true for you about your kids? Assuming you have kids, if you don't have kids, maybe you have, you know, think about your, your, uh, your loving your, uh, your fur baby, your pet, like my cat, I understand even when he does stuff stupid, <laughs> you know, and I still want to love on him and curl up with him and make him feel loved and supported and, you know, safe and, and all of those things. And so if I just, same thing for my, my, my children, children, right? So I want to take those same thoughts that I have toward my kids and just understand that that's how my heavenly father sees me. And so what are the words that I would be speaking to my kids when I want to love on them and encourage them though, and then direct those same thoughts to myself because those words have power. And if I believe in them, if you will believe in those words, then you will be brave. So here's our exercise for today from Annie. She says, write yourself a quick note and list Three things. These are what I want to see in the comments today. If you dare, if you dare, if you're brave enough to share them, um, you can also private message me and share with share three things that you are thankful for about you. What are you thankful for about yourself? Jot down a quick note, like first things, first three things that come to mind, big, small, significant, insignificant, seemingly in your mind whatever it is, three things that you are grateful for about yourself. Okay. Seriously, I want you to do it. And I can't wait 
to see what God, our great, awesome, good father in heaven reveals to you about how good you are. So Father, God, today, help us to see ourselves how you see us. And today, help us to actively submit our thoughts and our words over to the truth of Jesus Christ and his grace. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 All right. You guys have a rock solid, awesome, mean girl squashing, truth telling day. All right. I can't wait to see all of your thankful things. Bye.